Now that we know what the map is, let's look at how to apply it and choose our best product opportunities. I'll be doing this with you step by step, so follow along, watch the process, then go back and apply it piece by piece. Take your time with this and make certain that you follow the rules I've laid out for you. If you do this, you'll choose the correct products that will fuel your business for years to come. I'll begin by diving deeper into step one of the process, where we'll determine the size of the market. Let's take a look at exactly how to do this on Amazon. I'm now going to teach you how we can see what size the market is. I'm on Amazon.com and I have a number of examples to show you how to work out the size of the market for each of these products. The first example is a pool rake where I've typed the most generic term into the search bar, which is pool rake. My second example is the keyword water bottle. In my third example, I have the keyword biscuit tin. My fourth example is measuring cup. And the fifth example is the keyword baguette tray. So going back to the first example of a pool rake, the way we find out the market size is to look at the other products that are being sold and their BSRs. This will tell us the size of the entire marketplace, which is what we want to find out. So we can see the first one that comes up has a BSR of 455. The next one, 8,800. The next one down, 455. The next one down, 700. Then we have 110, 2,800. 1,700, 13,600, 9,900, 636, 18,200, 2,800. Coming to the bottom now, we have 24,600, 4,800, 5,600, 2,800, 22,600, 6,200, 453, 49,600, 1,700, and the very last one, 24,800. So we can start to get an average of BSRs and a feel for the size of this particular marketplace if we start to put all these daily sales together. The marketplace is fairly big. It's not massive. It's certainly not small. There's a number of products here that are selling very well, and so we can now get a feel for the size of this particular marketplace. If we go over to my second example, we can look at the BSRs on this page. Now I'm not going to read them all out this time, you can see the numbers on the page. We immediately see that this marketplace is a lot bigger because we've got a number of products inside the top 100. There's two in the first line and you'll also notice the layout on Amazon is slightly different from time to time with this category being displayed with four products in a row. Then we go down to the second line and these are all inside the top 200. And on the next line down, we see editorial recommendations. Then on the next line, a majority are inside the top 100. So this product, keyword of water bottles, is an absolutely huge marketplace here on Amazon. It's not what we want to see because this is too big for us to compete with all these high BSR products. Then if we move on to our biscuit tin, we can see this marketplace is looking smaller than the pool rake. So we will have to determine, is this marketplace big enough for us to get into? Are there enough sales for us to get into this biscuit tin marketplace? All of the products in the first row are outside our BSR limits, and one product is a biscuit cutter, so we disregard this. As we scroll to the next line, one of these is inside our BSR limit at 5,900. The next line is outside the BSR limit, so as you can see, this marketplace for biscuit tin is not big enough for us to get into. We can see that from these high BSR numbers, and this tells us the size of the marketplace, and it is just too small. Moving on to another example for you, and this is our measuring cups. It is quite similar to our marketplace for the pool rake, maybe even slightly bigger, because there's a few here inside the top 1,000. So you can see here, the numbers show you that the marketplace is bigger than the pool rake, but not as big as the water bottle. It looks a little bit too big for us to get interested, and coming in here to compete with these high BSR products. Then our last example is the baguette tray. We can see on the first line that two products are inside our limit of 10,000 BSR. There are a few products listed that are not our baguette tray, so we would disregard these ones. There is one here that is 5,700. Then we start to get a lot of products outside our BSR limits, and we also have some products that are not baguette trays. So we can see a smaller marketplace here for the baguette tray than the pool rake. This size marketplace is kind of what we're looking for. It is not too big and not too small. It is certainly not saturated, and we can see there is demand for it. 
So now that we've assessed the market size, it's time to analyze how many results came back for the keyword search we did. The fewer results that come back for a market that we are interested in, the better. We don't want to see a lot of results for the keyword because that means we are going to have to fight our way through a lot of competitors to get to the top of the search rankings. So the first thing we look for is whenever we type in a generic keyword, we will see the number of results in the top left just below the search box. So in this example of the pool rake, it's over 1,000 results coming back. If we look at the water bottle, we have over 60,000 results. Then if we look at the biscuit tin, we have over 1,000 results. For the measuring cup, we have over 10,000 results. And finally, for the baguette tray, we have only 247 results. So back to the pool rake. If an Amazon customer wants to buy a pool rake, when they type in pool rake, they will see there are over a thousand products to choose from. We also want to look at how many products displayed on this first page are similar to our product because we want to eventually get our product ranked on the first page. We want to see fewer products like our product if possible. So we scroll down and look at the pool rakes inside the BSR limit that we are concentrating on and we disregard any items that are not pool rakes. When we look at water bottles, we can see lots of different results displayed on the first page, and this shows what I call a confused marketplace. Whereas with the pool rakes, they are very generic and almost the same. The water bottle is very different. We have different pack sizes and different capacity sizes. There are different colors, different spouts, some with straws, some with infusers. So this is a very confused and saturated marketplace. If you put yourself in the shoes of the buyer, how do they find what they're looking for? Whereas with the pool rake, it's much easier for a buyer to make a decision because there are less things to decide on. Now with the biscuit tin, we saw over 1000 results for the biscuit tin, and we saw that this marketplace is not very big. We still wanna have a look and see how many results are showing for our biscuit tin. And we noticed that some of the results displayed are actually not biscuit tins. So we disregard and we see how many results in our BSR range are present because this tells us how many competitors we would have to contend with. With the measuring cups, we also see a very confused marketplace. There are over 10,000 results, which tells us there are too many results to compete with. Looking down the page, we see a very confused marketplace with two different types of products. We see a measuring drug and we see a measuring cup. There are different sizes, different pack sizes. So when we see this, it is a problem for us that we want to avoid. Now looking at the baguette tray, we only have 247 results, which is a good number for us to contend with. Looking at the different products, we see some have three slots and some have four slots. Some of the products we disregard because they are not baguette trays. But this looks like a good marketplace because it is not confused. The buyer can come in here and decide if they want a three slot or a four slot tray. So these results look more attractive to us. This is the style of product and this is the style of results that we want to see when searching for products on Amazon. Here is where things begin to get very interesting. Let's examine how good the current offerings are to see if there is room for us in the market. We need to ask the question, can I compete in this marketplace? This is what we are really trying to find out. I have another video that covers the gap that will go into more detail. So I encourage you to watch this video again after you have watched the video explaining the gap. So you know exactly what you're trying to look for and trying to find. We want to look at the current offerings and see if they are currently missing something and judge how good they are and ask the question, can we compete in this marketplace? So looking at the pool rakes, something that is very, very evident straight away is that they are all identical. There are some differences in color, but when we look at the various listings, we don't see any evidence that the buyer will be swayed by a particular color. We can see all the pool rakes are very similar. It's a simple product with some having slightly larger nets than others. So that's just a feature difference. The only one that stands out for me is the one that offers a bag for you to put the product into when you're storing it. Every other listing is doing exactly the same thing and we see very little difference between them. Now we can look at the water bottle. This is an example of a saturated market. This is not something that we wanna see. Some sellers are doing a plastic product. Some are selling a stainless steel product. Some water bottles have hangers. There are different types of spouts. There are different capacity water bottles. Some have infusers, some of them have wide mouths, some have straws. We can just see so many different styles here. So we really have to ask the question, is this something that we compete in? Is this a marketplace that we can compete in? And in this case, it would definitely be a no. With the pool rake, it would definitely be a yes. Now we can look at the biscuit tin. This is pretty similar to the pool rake. 
Nobody is doing anything very different here. We know that this market is small and the sellers are all following a very similar pattern and style of product. So this is an example of a product where we could stand out in the marketplace. Now we can look at the measuring cups. This is a very similar marketplace to the water bottle. Sellers have changed sizes and product kits. Um, there are different handles, different shapes, multi-packs, different colors. So in this marketplace, the color could sway the consumer because they may want to buy something that matches their kitchen. So this is an example of a marketplace that we don't want to see. It's going to be very difficult for us to compete in this marketplace. Now we can look at the baguette tray. This market is similar to the pool rake and the biscuit tin. This is even better because we have less results here. There are very similar products here with very little difference. The only difference is that some sellers are doing what looks like a four track tray and some are doing a three track and some are doing a two track. But there are no bonus items going along with it. It's simply the baguette tray. This is the style of marketplace that we are looking for. This is the style of marketplace that we can compete as opposed to the water bottle and measuring cups, which we don't want to compete with. Now we're at step four. It's time to make an educated decision to determine if we should move forward with a particular product opportunity or if we should archive it for now. I will explain how to do this by looking at our examples again on Amazon. The first example is the pool rake. We found there are not too many results coming back for this generic term. We found the marketplace is reasonably big and we found that the current sellers in the marketplace are selling similar products and they are not doing anything different. It is not a confused marketplace. It is not a saturated marketplace. So putting all these things together, we would make an educated decision to move this product forward into the next phase. Now, looking at the water bottle, we found that there is a vast number of results. We also found that this is a very confused marketplace. It is also one that is extremely saturated. There is no way that we would compete in this marketplace. So an educated decision here is to archive this product and not bring it forward. Let's look at the biscuit tin. We found not many results for the generic term and we found the marketplace is a little too small by looking at the high BSRs. There are not enough sales being made in this marketplace. So we would have to archive this product. Even though the marketplace is not doing anything special by adding bonus products, we would just make an educated decision and say this marketplace is too small, there's not enough demand for us to proceed with this product. Let's look at the measuring cups. A lot of different search results are displayed for the generic term. This is quite a big market. We can see it is a confused marketplace and the sellers are doing many different things with this product. It is going to be very difficult for us to stand out in this marketplace. So this product would be archived and we would not bring this one forward to our next phase. Lastly, we have the baguette tray. We found a low number of results for this generic search term. We found the size of the market to be good. There is plenty of demand for this particular product. It is not a confused or saturated marketplace. The sellers here are not doing anything different. They're all doing the same thing with no bonus products. So if we ask the question, could I stand out in this marketplace and could I compete in this marketplace? We could answer yes to both questions. So we would bring this product forward to the next phase of our research.